Yeah, my favorite number. Woo! <laughs> I love 70. And let's get our handy dandy stopwatch on standby. That's the camera. I'm a freaking idiot. I don't know how to open up a clock. We're gonna press start. Are you ready? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Crazy Ken is back, and today we're gonna be doing something on the show we've never done before, a speed test comparison. Oh yeah! So we're taking this 2013 Retina MacBook Pro 15 inch, and we're gonna run a speed test in Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere, and we're going to see which of the programs renders faster. Same hardware, same settings, same source material, two different editors. So let's see which is fastest. All right, so let's start with Adobe Premiere. So let's open up that. This is the latest version, Adobe Premiere Creative Cloud 2017. It's the same thing with Final Cut Pro. I'm using the latest version of that as well. And inside this folder, I have some footage from an old scratch disk. And I'm basically going to dump all this stuff in for both timelines. It was shot on a Canon EOS 7D Mark II with H.264 at 1080p resolution. And we'll dump our footage in there, plop it in the bin, and there we go. Oop, the window is freaking out on me. <laughs> so these are all sorted now by the time they were shot. Okay, so now to add a little bit of complexity, and I will be doing this inside of Final Cut Pro as well, I am going to add a color correction filter. So I'm going to go to my Lumetri tab, and I'm going to take the global saturation and bump that to 50. Paste that on everything else. So now, all of these clips have a 50% saturation applied, and I'm gonna leave it unrendered, just to make it more complicated for the export. So now, the fun part, and I have a jet black iPhone for a stopwatch here. We're going to export this sucker right from within Premiere. We're not going to use a queue or media encoder because I'm not doing anything like that for Final Cut Pro. So, just to keep the test as fair as possible, that is how it will be. So I'm gonna switch to the H.264 setting. It's going to match the source, it's gonna do video and audio, and the target bitrate should be between, I'm guessing it's gonna be around like 10 or 12, yep, target 10, maximum 12, that's what I get with my Final Cut Pro export. So that looks identical, everything looks good, H.264, 1080p at 23976 frames per second, target 10 megabits per second, max 12 megabits per second. Let's just throw that right onto the desktop and let's get our handy dandy stopwatch open. Right when I hit export, we're gonna press start. Are you ready? Bam. Here we go. This is the most exciting thing I have ever done. I, I don't think you understand how exciting this is. This is crazy. I don't know what to say, this is so cool. Okay, we just passed the two minute mark. According to Premiere, there is an estimated one minute and 13 seconds remaining. Yeah, my favorite number, woo! <laughs> I love 70. And... Done. All right, so three minutes and 20.95 seconds for Premiere to export this um, almost three minute long video in 1080p resolution with the unrendered color grading filters applied through Lumetri. Okay, not too shabby, not too shabby. Let's now recreate the exact same scenario inside Final Cut Pro. All right, so here is that exact same scratch disk, that exact same saturation adjustment, where I bump the global saturation down to 50%. In this case, it's negative 50, but that equates to what I was doing in Premiere. So you'll see it now looks the same. I'm gonna copy that and apply it to every clip and keep everything unrendered to make the export process more daunting for the computer. So now we will use the same codec H.264 which will average approximately the same bit rate. It may differ by just a teeny tiny bit, but that is negligible. QuickTime Movie, 1080p, same frame rate, same codec H.264, and let's throw that right into the desktop. And let's get our handy dandy stopwatch on standby. That's the camera. I'm a freaking idiot. I don't know how to open up a clock. There we go, stopwatch. <laughs> so, we got that on standby. Okay, it, it just lay, it, it just, yeah. Okay, I'll just lay you there. Right when I press return, I will hit start. Ready? Three, two, 
one, begin. So now Final Cut Pro is doing its thing. Holy shit, I wanted to adjust the camera angle, but it's already almost done. I won't have time. Done. 20 seconds. Holy shit, I didn't even think it was that fast. Like, I knew it was fast, but not that fast. Check this out. Exported in 20 seconds. That is incredible. So, for an almost three minute video, 1080p H.264, it took, what was it, three minutes and 20 seconds to export from Premiere? It took 20 seconds to export from Final Cut Pro. Ladies and gentlemen, holy shit! This is a three year old computer, guys. 16 gigs of RAM. It's still that fast. I will say, I like Premiere and I like Final Cut, but this is one thing I really praise Final Cut for. It's speed. Incredible performance. Now, what was I trying to prove with this? I'm not trying to say which editor is better, because you know me, I don't think anything is better than anything else. Hell, I did a video on this subject. All I'm trying to show is that truly, specs on paper really don't mean much. Ironically, I did a video on that subject as well. This is a three-year-old computer, right? But Final Cut Pro was able to render out the video way faster than Premiere. Both programs with the same footage on the same hardware. And I think it's that integration of Apple's hardware and software that gives people the edge when they switch to the Mac. Not trying to bash the other or say which is better for you. That will differ for everybody. All I'm saying is be cautious. Specs on paper don't mean much. And I think we proved that again today. So before you buy, think again, bitch. All right, Crazy Ken, I'm out.